I guess the spoiler that I can give is that our DNA can change. Oh, that's okay. That's a very short story. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Chat, try to look pretty, please. We're recording. Chat, are you wearing the best attire you could? Good, good. Looking pretty, chat. You're looking very good. Thank you so much, Jason, for being part of this today again, to joining us on uh, Study Time, to bring some of your knowledge to people that are here. Among our viewers, we have students, we have workers, we have all kinds of people. I'm sure that all of us can really take advantage from your knowledge. Jason is the CEO of RAD and RAD is an NGO that helps people all around the world to find a therapy that they need and also they help them fund that therapy. Jason in particular has a master in biopsychology. So again, thank you Jason for being here. Yes, of course. Today's talk is going to be about how being productive and many other parts of our personality are encrypted in our DNA. And I'm very, very curious to know more about that because it's something that makes you a little bit mad because like, if it's in my DNA, can I actually change it? Can I do something about it? You know, I, I think there is a lot of information out there about our mental health and how it connects to our genetics or our environment. And, you know, when we talk about the genetics um, behind our mental health, there's a, a lot of confusion um, saying that something is genetically passed down, saying that we are struggling with a, a disorder, a condition, a disease because it is genetic. There is a lot of the assumption that this means uh, almost like we're, we're doomed to something or we simply have to accept that, that that is the way that it is. However, a lot has changed since, uh, you know, the past 20, 30 years as we've really started to explore this field that within biopsychology called epigenetics. Epigenetics is a, is a massive field, but biopsychology does touch on that a bit. And it suggests that our, our genes do change, that our DNA can change, that we have the ability to influence it. And so really when I look at productivity genetically, really what I'm looking at are things that are almost indirectly impacting us like our sleep schedule. Some of how our sleep schedule works can be genetic. Some people are morning people, some people are not morning people. And being forced to work as a morning person when you are not a morning person can absolutely impact you and make you less productive. We can even look at things like diet and exercise. Some of the way that we eat and some of what we seek in our diet can be genetic as well as environmental. So uh, when we say environmental, we really mean things that we've learned over time. Our capacity to handle stress is something that we can inherit that's that's absolutely something that can get passed down to some degree so if both of your parents or one of your parents can't really handle a whole lot of stress it's very likely that you are the same way or even looking at genetic diseases things that can be passed down i think probably best for this conversation would be looking into something like adhd which does tend to pass down from family members and Absolutely. ADHD can impact the development of our frontal lobe, making it very, very hard to focus. And so in that way, genetically, that can impact our productivity as well. So are you saying that, especially when we're young, we, we find ourselves very detached from our friends, or at least we have, most of us have a feeling of like trying to be different from them. Are you telling us that because of our DNA, those things that maybe we don't like about them, maybe because they're too uh, anxious or too stressed, they pass on to us? Um, they, they can. Um, what's, what's really interesting to see is that you know, most teens do go through a rebellious phase where they do a lot different than their parents. However, for the most part, people tend to be just like their parents by the time they reach adulthood. That is a mix of us, you know, oftentimes not having the level of, of reflection and introspection to change, but also because we've learned that. So there are some genetic factors that take place, but we're really more looking at eye color, hair, things along those lines environmentally or behaviors that we learned that's more where we're learning you know if, if mom maybe is a very anxious person in general 
very likely you'll have picked up that behavior and part of her stress response has been passed down genetically but also her behaviors could have passed down or if dad is very disconnected impersonal um, impartial some of that can also start to be learned to be picked up as well so um the the genetic component to a lot of these things is more, again more indirect uh, as it affects our productivity but the behavioral side what we learn what we have seen and begin to emulate a lot of that stuff is going to especially impact our productivity at least to me this is a very new concept the fact that it is in the DNA. In a way that also like smaller things like productivity can be passed on, on DNA. It, it, it's it's kind of interesting and it's somehow also scary in some points. And if you had to do like a proportion, how much would you say that it's DNA and how much is it us learning from them because we see them while we grow up? Yeah, as it relates to productivity, it's probably like 20, 80. So it, the vast majority of this is going to be things that we have learned. Um, the, the genetic side to these things, again, it can seem scary. Sometimes it can even seem damning, but it's really not. And the more that we begin to understand our genetic makeup, the more we see how flexible it can be. It's really kind of a roadmap to some degree. And there are parts of this roadmap that we've just kind of gone down and solidified. And then there are other parts of this roadmap that are really more of a natural guidance, a natural influence in a different direction or in a particular direction that we don't necessarily have to follow. So I can't change my eye color that that's already set there. I can't change the likelihood towards balding or um, towards having certain tastes or um, even, you know, to some degree, um, changing how my skin will age. Um, things like that we can all just start to inherit and that's going to be what it's going to be. But the stress response, the sleep schedule, um, being able to modify our diets is all going to be really critical in uh, all things that we can actually do to change. Uh, even looking at things like ADHD and ADD, these are things that we can also address, change um, and mend. And, you know, for me, some of the importance of what we do at RAD um, is to try and help younger and younger people in hopes that if we can address these issues early on by the time that they would reproduce, they potentially don't pass down those genetic factors or those behavioral patterns to their children. And that shows some potential for actually overcoming these issues in the long run. So are you saying that sometimes the problems that we have are because our parents did not go to therapy? <laughs> um, yes. So we call this um, transgenerational trauma, and it is a, a very, very real thing. However, it's worth considering this doesn't necessarily mean that we can just continuously pass the blame upwards like well thanks mom like you <laughs> you didn't do the work so that's why i'm here because she could do the same oh we'll say thanks to your grandma because your grandma didn't do it so and then your grandma's like we'll say thanks to your great grandma um, because there's an infinite layer of depth we can go into to try and pass along you know where does it begin versus well, this is where we are now. So let's let's work on that. Because it's in the DNA, it sounds like something that is very uh, encarved in, inside of us. So is it possible to completely get rid of it? Like, is it gonna be very hard to get rid of it? Can you get rid of it? Or is it something that in any case you will have to deal with sooner or later? Yes, we, we can remove some of these things. It, it is a more complicated response though, because it, depression and anxiety don't seem valuable to us when we're experiencing them. But in the long run, we, we do see them as valuable to some degree. Anxiety has a way of protecting us from things. And even though the perception, even though what we're looking at, we're seeing well, me being afraid of leaving home is not productive or helpful. It doesn't change that the anxiety thinks that it's still doing the right thing in protecting us, but outside is scary. Something could happen. Why would we remove that? And genetically, 
you've survived. So it's proven successful. So when you pair yourself up with somebody else with an anxiety disorder, you yeah, that's there's really no reason for that to not pass down. Same thing with depression. Depression is actually very important to us. And without what genetically would make up depression, um, without the specific genes related to depression, we actually wouldn't have a society. Part of depression is empathy and sympathy. It's what allowed us to go from stay away from my cave or I'm going to club you to, well, if we both agree to put our clubs down, maybe we'll survive. And unfortunately, depression can go beyond that, go way, way further and really hurt us. But again, we're not seeing those things from the standpoint that would make us want to change our genes. Just like we're watching the COVID virus evolve, it's evolving to survive. We successfully survive even if we don't thrive. And that can be really, really hard for us to, to mend, but it is definitely possible. So does it remain in some part in our DNA? Can we, even if like our parents had it, we didn't show it. We're not diagnosed with depression or anxiety or any of those. Can we still pass it onwards? Or like all this stops with us because we didn't show it, so. Yeah, that can get um, increasingly complicated too because of your partners genetic makeup, um, where they are in their work as well. Um, there's, a, there's a thing you know, we sometimes look at in relationship psychology that um, people at the same level of trauma tend to uh, end up together. And so people who have both done the work ending up together, great. Children are definitely going to benefit from that genetically and behaviorally. Two people who have not done the work, oh boy, you know, it just it just keeps passing down over and over and over. If anything, the, the people that enter our program that have that experience, we always have to share this really frustrating truth, but you know, it, it may not be your fault. You may not have done anything to deserve this, but it is our responsibility to address it, or we will simply pass it down or impact others with it. So it's it's very important to resolve. But the genetic side, again, it's, it's such a small factor. It's really more of a minor consideration over time, because if we can change the behaviors, we can nullify the genetic side as it relates to this topic. The genetics are only going to impact so much. What about COVID babies? Babies COVID. that got, yeah, baby that were born during COVID period. So there was a lot of tension and anxiety. And like, what do you see for them? What really concerns me most about children, especially in the past generation or two, especially going forward, is what they're going to take on environmentally. This is a tough time to grow up. Boomers were really starting to distrust government and really starting to distrust people seen in, in public office and positions, but millennials grew up in a time where that was just default. Yeah, we don't trust these people. They're not good people. That's just how it is. And then you look at Gen Z and they're just like, oh yeah, everything's, <laughs> it's over. Um, so like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't, I have no hope for this. Um, that's just it. I'm going to make the best of it, I guess. But yeah, I, I, the world's already ending. Imagine the children that are coming out during this, a time where people are wearing gloves, wearing masks, where people are wiping down groceries and things that are coming in, that fear, that anxiety, that stress does pass down, that, that will stay. The concern that we have, the distrust we have for government, the financial situation, all of these fears, all of these concerns are things that these children will grow up with and see and take and feed off of. If you are very stressed, they will be very stressed and that stress will become a default to them. So in general, we understood that people can be educated towards like a better trait, even if our genetic is predisposing us towards a negative one. I would say a good takeaway is that your genes are only going to indirectly affect your productivity. You're not genetically hardwired to be unproductive or lazy. You instead deal with a set of genetic factors that can influence your sleep, can influence your ability to manage stress, could potentially pass down a disease or a disorder that can make it hard to be productive. But ultimately, your behaviors 
and what you do are going to help overcome a lot of that. Oh, well, thank you so much again for joining us today. I, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great chat. Well, thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Take care.